I'm standing in room 43. Uh, most people enter the room from the door opposite me, and this is, in fact, the first picture uh, that they see. The brilliant colors, the uh, strange scene depicted, uh, are very appealing to people who approach it. And there is a lot of competition uh, in this room for public attention. On the far wall is Van Gogh's sunflowers. On my right is Seurat's great bathers at Anières. So this is a room of masterpieces, and it is very, very interesting to see how the public responds to an artist who, in fact, many of them have never heard of uh, before. It shows something of the strength of Hodler's artistic vision. Ferdinand Hodler is born in Switzerland in 1853. He is taught uh, Swiss landscape painting. There is a long tradition of that throughout the 19th century as the Swiss acquainted themselves with their mountainous country and generation after generation of really wonderful artists emerged who took the very distinctive Swiss landscape as their theme. As I say, Hodler was raised to do this himself. He early on won prizes in Geneva where he studied for the fineness of his uh, landscapes. Uh, and throughout the final decades of the 19th century, he kept returning uh, to lake scenes and mountain scenes uh, with which he had grown up. In the summer of 1902, he is uh, in Bern, in the Keene Valley, and it was there that he began a number of uh, paintings looking at this very distinctive landscape. The, the valley is several kilometers long, uh, but ends in this uh, great mountain rising up at the end. It is some 3,500 meters high. So what we have here in this picture is an extraordinary compression of space. In the foreground of the picture, at the bottom, you see weeds or flowers, wild flowers, maybe only five, six inches high. But at the top of the picture, you are looking at a geographical feature that is miles and miles away. It's very rare to compact this much space into uh, one landscape painting. And of course, Hodler's choice to paint it on a vertical canvas rather than the horizontal canvas that most landscape painters uh, often choose was a very significant one. He wanted to deal with this vast amount of space in one rel relatively small surface. It is, in fact, of the hundreds of landscapes in uh, Hodler's career, the most insistently vertical. And you'll notice something else that's interesting. At the top, even after he finished painting the landscape, which, as I say, he probably began on site, but almost certainly finished back in his studio, even as he finished it, he keyed out the stretcher at the top to get another half inch of canvas, just so it became even more insistently vertical, and that sense of compressed space uh, became even more important to him. Now, we're very pleased to have on loan from a private collector uh, beside the picture a uh, work of Paul Cezanne, probably done at exactly the same time that Hodler was painting uh, this, probably done near the end of um, Cezanne's life in 1902 or 1903. Uh, and it, too, shows a wall of rock, red rock in Bibimus Quarry uh, near Aix-en-Provence in the south of France where uh, Cezanne lived. So the wall of rock that uh, takes up 90% of Cezanne's picture corresponds wonderfully with the great wall of rock of the Massif uh, that dominates um, Hodler's painting. And it's very interesting to contrast the way that these two contemporaries uh, each uh, dealt with uh, ancient forms of nature uh, and how they constructed very new kinds of pictures uh, out of this, uh, this subject matter. The 
British public for a long time has loved the, the Alps. Alpinism, the climbing of the Swiss mountains, was in some ways an English uh, in, invention. From the mid-19th uh, century, the English uh, were so often going to uh, uh, Switzerland to, for health reasons to climb uh, the mountains. Uh, it was a, a great uh, sport. Uh, and in fact, interestingly, the very first person to climb the Bloomless Alp in 1860 was a man named Leslie Stephen, who was the editor of the Dictionary of British National Biography, uh, and in fact, the father of the writer Virginia Woolf. So it, uh, there is a British connection uh, here that it is uh, fun to think about. The other striking feature of the picture is the intensity of the color. Uh, the almost acidic lime or lemon uh, yellow green that you see in the foreground playing off against many shades of green, some of great intensity. Um, so that the surface of the picture almost vibrates with the changes in tone on the way up where until it comes to a kind of calmness at the top with these white dancing clouds across the very top of the picture uh, surface. The hills of the Keene Valley also seem to intersect. Uh, I sometimes say they look like the laces of a uh, boot, which would be well known to mountain climbers. He was, Hodler, at this point very uh, close to a friend of his in um, Geneva, a man, man named Dalcroze, who was the great exponent of an explainer of rhythm, eurythmic dancing. The Le Bon School of Dancing today in London derives from uh, eurythmic dancing. What Dalcroze said and what um, Hodler worked with was this notion that in fact nature seen broadly falls into basic patterns of movement, just like our movements or the movements of a dancer fall into simple patterns. And so he is simplifying uh, the landscape so that we can begin to understand and appreciate these grand rhythms of, uh, of nature. So that sense of nature dancing is in fact part of what Hodler wants us to see in a picture like this. This picture is a new acquisition here at the gallery. It just arrived on our walls in late 2022 by a Swiss artist, Ferdinand Hodler. His Keen Valley with the Blumus Alp Massif, uh, a work painted in Switzerland in 1902. We're very grateful for the opportunity to acquire this picture with help from a Swiss foundation, but also with uh, bequests in wills to the National Gallery, particularly one from Mr. Leslie Med, OBE, and nearly a quarter of the pictures on the walls of the National Gallery have come to the nation as the result of bequests. If you're interested in learning more about art history, click here or here and subscribe to our channel. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I will see you again.